My name is Patricia Hunt, and I'm a research professor at Washington State University. This is a video about BPA, and this is Professor Hunt, one of the first scientists to discover and study the negative effects of BPA exposure on humans. I first became interested in BPA, or bisphenol A, by complete accident. So we were in the midst of a set of studies and using the mouse to study eggs and egg development. Suddenly, all of my control eggs started to show us abnormalities. They were just living in these cages and drinking from water, water bottles that were made from polycarbonate plastic. And polycarbonate is made from BPA. And when it's damaged, it begins to leach this chemical. And it had a dramatic effect on their eggs, giving us lots and lots of chromosomally abnormal eggs, which would not lead to normal babies. So what is BPA? BPA is an industrial chemical that is widely used to produce strong and durable plastics. Since its development in the 1930s, we have discovered it to be something called an endocrine disruptor, meaning it mimics and interferes with our body's natural hormones. Hormones are responsible for a lot of the changes our bodies go through. And when BPA disrupts these hormones, it can result in a variety of issues, such as reproductive abnormalities, lowered cognitive function, an increased risk of cancer, childhood weight gain and obesity, impaired brain development, low birth weight in babies, ADHD, and anxiety-related disorders. Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't think sucking down these chemicals is probably good for any of us, but what I worry most about is developing babies and newborns and, and infants. And what most of the research in this field has shown is that many, many organ systems in the developing fetus are very, very vulnerable to exposure effects from these types of chemicals. Um, so these kinds of seemingly minor changes that occur during fetal development can have really long-term repercussions. Okay, obviously we'd all like to reduce our exposure to bisphenol A and other bisphenols. How do you do that? Well, that's tricky because these chemicals are in so many different places in our lives. So by now, you might be wondering where biphenol A is commonly used and where we most often come into contact with it. Today, biphenols are widely used in a variety of plastics, such as reusable water bottles, baby bottles, paints, food containers, and sports equipment, as well as in the thermal paper and sales receipts and in the protective linings of many canned food containers. You know, when a lot of studies like ours started to be published, as it became obvious that BPA was inducing some bad effects, it was replaced. And so we all know we should be buying those BPA-free products, right? So what are they if they're not BPA? You know, as what some of my colleagues call them, regrettable substitutions, because they're BPA-free, yes, but it's another bisphenol that may be just as bad, may even be worse. Many have the same sorts of effects. Uh, we haven't studied all of them yet, but now we have, instead of one bad actor, BPA, we have a huge class, a huge family, if you will, of bisphenols. Okay, perhaps what you're thinking is if these chemicals are dangerous, then certainly my government's not going to allow them to be in my food. The FDA is, is in place to protect us from exposures that might be hazardous to our health. What's always been the assumption in, in chemical regulation is if a little bit's bad for you, more is going to be worse for you, and even more is going to kill you. Well, for these chemicals, since they're hormone-like, they can mimic some of the actions of hormones, very, very tiny amounts can induce dramatic effects on cells. So in the case of, of BPA, one of the things I think that's problematic is consumers can't tell what's in their products. So one of the things we need to ask for is changes to labeling that would actually allow us to see if it's BPA free, okay, what does it have? What's in there instead of BPA? Green chemistry is the future. You know, how if we could start this process at the beginning and ensure that the products we make, the chemicals that we make for specific purposes are not gonna be endocrine disrupting, that would be huge. So there is some hope. Thank you so much to Professor Hunt for all the great information during our talk. And to find out more information on BPA, check out the links in the video description or visit our website at ehn.org.